as the fluctuations go in the direction, we say the vacuum is polarized. And the term vacuum polarization displacement current naturally arises from that concept. If as the energy passes through, it goes into a vortex form, we would perceive it as an elementary particle or a particle. So hyperspace is alive and well in the physics literature. It's spoken in the language of mathematics. And we have, quote, the other side. Now today, I'd like to talk about three methods that, that would interact with the zero point energy, hopefully in a very uh, large, to produce a large effect. Uh, these involve motion of ions, pulse field opposition, with, which Tom Bearden has been talking about a lot lately, and, has, and we've, we get the concept of a scalar wave out, and we'll talk about that. And then what may produce a very large effect, producing vortices, in, in the zero point energy by introducing vortices in plasmas or ions. The concept of vacuum polarization is it appears extensively in the field of quantum electrodynamics. It shows that the different elementary particles interact with the vacuum quite differently. On the top, the ion, a stable mass, has a very st steep lines of convergence onto the particle. And if, and there, if you can imagine that quantum foam, there are, it forms a stable lines of vacuum polarization around the particle. The electron, especially conduction electrons, forms like a cloud, a smear cloud. And it's recognized that this quivers and is kind of like in a fluctuating equilibrium with the vacuum polarization. And what this tells us, if we want to really kick up the vacuum energy in a, in a structured macroscopic way, what we should work with are the ions. Don't work with the conduction electrons because they're in equilibrium. And there's, there's literature to support this idea. And so this is one of the key critical transducers for working with the zero point energy. And uh, I really can't stress that strong enough. If we take a group of ions, and oscillate them together as a group, we can form a macroscopic polarization in the vacuum. And it would be called a macroscopic vacuum polarization displacement current. It was the topic of my last year's talk. And when many ions move together, you can pr create this wave in the vacuum that's an ordered structure. And it may be quite possible, it may be likely, we'll have to do experiments to see this, that the conduction electrons do not readily interact with this type of wave, and it takes some type of ion to be the transducer to pick up this wave or launch this wave. And I believe this principle is the key to the discoveries of T. Henry Moray. That if we work with the ions in the tube, we work with coronas and excite them at the ion acoustic mode, by the way, at the bottom, it's in the literature, it's called the ion acoustic mode, where the ions are undergoing the oscillation. Things get really complicated in a plasma during this mode. They've observed experimentally a number of anomalies. They call them anomalies. Large radiate, radiate, radiant energy absorption, big high frequency spikes, runaway electrons, anomalous heating, and anomalous plasma resistance. And I propose that the reason they're are getting these anomalies is because they are directly interacting with the zero point energy in a macroscopic way. Okay. Now the question is, what experiments can we do? We frugally, easy to do experiments to see if these ideas are on the right track. We can work with plasmas, we can work with coronas. In plasma tube, we can excite them at the ion acoustic mode. They will produce this big energetic event, and you'll know you're on the mode, and then we'll get into what can give us a clue that, we're on, that something new and special is happening as opposed to just coupling back to the old electrical conduction that we're familiar with. Another place to work with ions is in electrolytic solutions. This is an experiment that appears, that appears in the literature. What they do here is they put an explosive discharge in the liquid, and the cork pops up. Okay, but they have to put the, the explosive discharge in a certain way. They found for the same amount of energy, if they don't make the pulse sharp enough, they get an ordinary discharge through the liquid and the liquid remains stable. But if they make the pulse just a little bit sharper, it, it exceeds a threshold and the 
cork pops out. There's a violent motion of the liquid. It's a very interesting experiment. They, in this particular article, they try to explain it by adding an extra term to the Lorenz force law that's interacting with the lattice or the ions of the water. And this extra term was called Amper's law. And it would, it's controversial because what it'll do, if you take that extra term and always leave it in into your system, you'll start to kick up, working through the Maxwellian formalism, you'll start to kick up some anomalies you know, in propagation, very similar perhaps to the anomalies that we are trying to detect. Okay, what can we do? If we take off an ion acoustic oscillation, either from a plasma tube or an electrolytic solution, we can then conduct that uh, oscillation, this assumed macroscopic vacuum polarization would, would uh, be in the air around the conductor and be guided by the crystal lattice of the conductor. It would have a minimal interaction with the conduction band electrons. And we'd observe that we could conduct power with the wires remaining cool. Now, having conducting power with the wires remaining cool is a spectacular experiment. Any electrical engineer who could see a light bulb light on number 40 wire without the wire heating, and of course they could run control experiments to get equal brightness and show the wires heating with normal conduction, would immediately be a spectacular experiment demonstrating an anomaly that would be quite convincing and would be readily duplicatable. And that, this is a very desirable type of experiment. Now, I've heard reports, and I think everyone here have heard reports of what they call cold currents, getting power conducted with, without heating the wires. And it's a very significant discovery. This is a, a hypothesis that may support that conjecture. It requires an experiment. Nobody's going to believe this unless you have an experiment. Uh, the nature of the experiment. And could be lighting a light bulb. It's, this is light, the class.